I'm drinking a Buckler non-alcoholic beer. This is the taste of, I fucked up. I quit, I quit, it's tough. It's tough. The worst thing about quitting is that everybody tries to make you feel like a pussy. I don't know what that is. It's this weird intimidation thing where everybody's like, hey man, you want a shot? And I'll be like, no, that's cool, I quit. Oh, oh, how about I get you a big Sprite? You want a big Sprite and a lollipop and a balloon, you fucking pussy? So now I just cut people off. They'll be like, hey man, you want a shot? I'm like, shot? Let's score some heroin. They're like, whoa. Whoa. I'm like, all right, well, then just grab me a Sprite, pussy. You don't want a fucking party? Give me a Sprite, bitch. Greg Fitzsimmons is back on the Adam Carolla Show. Fitz, dog, great stand-up comedian, and uh, we'll be coming to a town near you. Fitz, dog, radio, by the way, and Sunday Papers, where you can hear the podcast. All right, should we do a little news? Man? News yeah. it up. News it up. Well, before we before we do news, uh, once again, happy achievement day, 15 years of podcasting. So I have some stats I just want to rattle off, courtesy oh, okay. of uh, super Gio. fan Giovanni. Uh-huh. So today's episode, the one we're recording right now, as we record this, this is your 3,689th episode. Damn. Yeah. That would be one a, <laughs> one a day for 10 years. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. 3,000? Yeah, because there's three. 3,600, 3, 3, right? Yeah, 3,600. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Um, the, your total running time that you have been on air doing mm. this podcast is 267 days, 15 hours, 16 minutes. I don't think my dad has heard seven minutes of, of that, <laughs> of what you spoke of. He may listen to this show, yeah. but that yeah. total running time, I don't think... I do not feel like anyone with the last name Corolla would make it past the five minute mark yeah. to- in total. Are for you that. glad? Uh, you you know the thing about parents who don't care, um, it, it, it's it's always a double edged sword. You know, it started off a, as a kid when you have parents that don't care. Well, you don't get a college fund, and you don't you don't have meatloaf night, but you also don't have a curfew. Right. So you, you, right. You, there's a certain amount of autonomy, that, a freedom that comes along with not caring, you yeah. know. And when you talk to other people, and they go, "Oh, what did your parents think when you told me you wanted to get into comedy? They probably wanted you to join, you know, be, be a lawyer or a doctor." I was like, "I didn't. I don't know if I told them. I, they don't care." <laughs> so yeah, there's right. a, there's freedom in it. Yeah. And then later on, when you get on the radio, like like you can tell when you're talking to someone who thinks people listen who they know yeah you know like like drew knew that his wife listened to the show she, you could always tell he was in a kind of defensive sort of run out the clock kind of right. four corners kind of defense you know right. so you can tell when a guy thinks somebody is listening yeah and knows they're gonna get an earful when they get home or what have you but I would always have the autonomy of just saying whatever I wanted because I I never thought I mean I I did I had somebody somebody told my sister that I called uh my nephews um Nazis uh but it didn't actually happen so <laughs> once in a while people will bring the mountain to Mohammed yeah, for you yeah, there was right. there was lovely ladies who were formerly hot you know who had a couple of drinks <laughs> you, broken yeah. wand yeah but of course what I said was my their father was born in Germany and is German, and I said we should should no longer blame my kids, you know, my nephews for the Holocaust. Then you should blame me, who wasn't in this country for slavery. Uh, okay. You know, no one was here, and my family's in Italy and poor. You know, yeah. riding a donkey in a circle somewhere. We didn't own anything. You know, so I was, I was doing. And of course. The, the formerly hot lady whose magic wand is out of batteries, of course, translated that into me calling yeah. the kids Nazis. Oh. Yeah, it was awesome. But you've also spoken for 3,600 hours, so there's a lot of shit that you have said that they haven't heard. 
that's I mean, a good point. I would say 10% of it is about your parents. <laughs> oh, yeah. And listen, I, I, I think people, I don't know where you come down on this, but I come down on you are not allowed to make shit up about people, but you are allowed to report the truth. Right. Right. And if they have a beef with it, then they shouldn't have done whatever it is they did or didn't do. That is on them. It's like it's I like, agree a thousand percent. It's it's like the the guy got arrested by the Kansas City PD for shooting into a crowd. It's like him going, "What the fuck?" You know? Yeah. It's like, well, don't shoot into a crowd. Yeah. And then you go, "Oh, am I being arrested because he doesn't like me or something?" No. Here's the deal. I'm allowed to be accurate. I'm not allowed to make shit up, and I'm not allowed to embellish, but I am allowed to be accurate. Right. And if you want to control that, then don't do dumbass things. Right, right. Expect me not to talk yep. about it. Yep. Thank you. All I right, like sorry. it. I right. like it. That's your and and uh, one last stat. Your most frequent guest that didn't, that, and this is not including anybody who had like a weekly segment on the show, your most frequent guest on the show Greg Fitzsimmons. Get out of oh, here. Yes. Are you serious? Perfect. Poetic. Yeah. No way. This is your 94th appearance on Whoa. this podcast. Oh, high five. High Good five. job, guys. <laughs> yes. All right. Uh, so let's get on to news now. So Sylvester Stallone, his mm-hmm. daughters just did an interview, and um, they they said- Current hot chicks. Current hot chicks, yeah. They're, Sly's they're daughters are current hot oh, chicks? Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Put them up if you can't buy them. Wow. Um, so they- uh, they were going to move to New York City, mm-hmm. and Damn. they admitted that Sly hired Navy SEALs to train his daughters before they moved. Oh, really? Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Well, Navy SEALs plant like mines on the hulls of ships at night and stuff, so I'm guessing this was more land-based stuff. Right. They're in the woods for six hours. I also want to say this. When did the Navy SEALs take over the Green Berets? Yeah. When we were kids, Fitz Dog, it was Green, Green Beret Berets. this and Green Beret that. And if you were trying to like do some story of like, oh, this guy was a Green Beret with a black belt. You didn't fuck with that Green. So Green, there was a song about the Green Berets that uh, was sung by a Green Beret. Uh, John Wayne made a Green Beret. But it was all... Green Beret, and at some point in like the mid '90s, it slid over to Navy SEAL. I think Vietnam might have been bad for uh, Green Berets because it was always they were the first ones in. Green Berets right. used to come in before the soldiers. Yeah, I do want to just take this quick time to say, former guest uh, of the show and very good friend of mine, uh, Sergeant Robert Patrick Lewis, mm. former Green Beret combat medic. Mm. That's the that's the guy. Yeah. I think the beat poets also, because they started wearing the beret. They ruined the beret. Yeah. No, like, it's like the gays did with my chaps. They ruined them. <laughs> they no longer can proudly wear those in you Santa hung Monica. Up, you hung up the chaps? What was I going to do yeah. with them? Right. Just march down Santa Monica Jesus Boulevard Christ. with them? With wow. a smart cocktail in my hand? <laughs> no, thank <laughs> you, Bob. Doesn't have the yeah. same effect no. anymore. Guys start spanking you. You're like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? I'm just here to shoe some horses. <laughs> yeah. No, they took it. Uh, they, the beatniks took the beret, and the gays took the chaps. Name one guy that wears a beret. Kinnison wore a beret. Um, Nobody since Kinnison I has gotta, coolly I, wore a beret. I got a, I got a, I got a comedian who wore a beret. Really? Yeah. Uh Freddie Rerun. Oh, Johnson, yeah. He wore a beret. Yeah, he wore a beret. Although black guys don't count because they get to wear whatever hair, the head stuff they want. Also, you know, what I mean? you know there was the one who wore the stra- stra- strawberry beret? Raspberry beret. That was it Prince. Was the raspberry yeah. beret. Yeah. Yeah. F- um, Rerun had a beret. Yeah. And that guy could dance for a fat guy. I know, and the sad part is, is he wasn't even fat by today's standards. Right. He was just fat in a world where everyone used to be skinny. Right. You really, you had to just have an extra 12 pounds on you back mm-hmm. in the day to be known as fat. Yeah. Yeah, I had a cousin, Greg. My cousin, Greg, was maybe husky at best, you know, but that's all we had. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because when you're 11, you haven't lost your hair. You haven't done, you know, it's, it's hard to earn nicknames, you know. So right. we, 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 
we went in on fat on yeah. Greg, but Greg wasn't fat. He was yeah. just a little. We were super skinny and wiry, right? And then he was like a little bit husky. Yeah, and that was it. That's all we had. Or, or you call him Slim. Because a little yeah. husky, you call him Slim. We didn't do the short guy called Stretch here. No, we didn't. No. That that's a New York. We, uh-huh. we weren't that subtle. Yeah, we were yeah, more yeah. on the nose. <laughs> right, we were right. Fatsy Balatsy <laughs> and Porky Balorky. <laughs> What'd you call the guy with the big nose? Oh, uh, oh, you you talking about uh, Doctor Weinstein? <laughs> He was a dentist. He called him my dentist. I called him my dentist and a friend. And I called him my friend. <laughs> and the worst is you can see right up the nostrils. Right up those two He's huge working on your teeth. You're like, Jesus. Oh, my God. It's like uh. staring up into a black hole. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, where were we? The Green Berets? Uh, no. no. Navy no, Seals. Navy Seals. Oh, Trading yeah. Is that players. really going to work? Yeah. I, I don't. I mean, training is great. But isn't all crime now either somebody has a weapon or just comes up behind you and bonks you on the head with something? Like, is, is that the training is more for like squaring off? You know what I mean? I don't, I don't feel like we're squaring off anymore. I think Krav Maga is actually the way to go for, yeah. for up close combat. Yeah. Krav mm-hmm. Maga. Yeah. Because that's about, I, I did it for a long time, and a lot of it is about weapons. Ah. Uh. Getting the weapons out. Getting a knife, you know, out of somebody's hand. And you know what else it is? Hmm. First thing you do is run in Krav Maga. Oh, if it is? you can run, you fucking run. Yeah. It's about kicking someone in the balls and turning around. Have you ever had to use your training in real life? I didn't have to. <laughs> but he chose to. <laughs> We've, he's a well-chronicled violent fast. Yeah, past. I'm a little violent. Yeah. Krav Maga. Is that a guy's name? Yeah. Wow, yep. that'd be better than Larry Jacuzzi. Yeah, oh, he's a... you have an entire martial art <laughs> named after you. Right, you know, right. yeah, he uh, he was Irish. Really, McGraw. Oh, I, it's always because it's always out of Israel. I always think it's some Israeli yeah, it thing. Sounds like that. No, I'm, ma- I'm making this. Oh, up okay. <laughs> <laughs> See if Krav McGraw. <laughs> McGraw. Krav McGraw. Is that a person? Krav Magra. It sounds Hebrew, maybe. It's some sort of Hebrew yeah. thing that means stand and fight or something. Yeah. Or some shit. Anyway, go ahead. So there's a criminal case involving handwritten lyrics to mm. the classic rock mega hit, Hotel California. Hebrew for c- combat, basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, All right, sorry. Makes sense. Mm-hmm. So, so in the 70s, there's this guy trying to write a book about the Eagles. Mm-hmm. Uh, the book never came out, but the guy writing the book reportedly kept the handwritten work and the lyrics and the handwritten lyrics for many songs. And then he sold the pages to a rare book dealer for fifty thousand dollars. These guys, and then this this book dealer and a couple other guys, they're selling these to auction houses now. Don Henley catches wind of this in uh, twenty twelve mm-hmm. and, and tries to buy uh, a, buy one of the pages for eighty five hundred dollars. Just buy it back. Mm-hmm. Um, unaware that they had like hundreds of other pages in their possession, and now oh. it's come out that they're um, they're trying to sell Hotel California and um, other songs to uh, to auction houses. So they're going to trial. So I was looking up at Krav Maga. <laughs> By the way, Maga is spelled the same as Maga. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell them that. Well, I do have a, I do have a few hats at home that I've been a little <laughs> reluctant to wear out in the Hollywood uh, yeah, area. Yeah. But if I put Krav yeah. above it, uh-huh. it's okay to wear around. I think I'd have, you know, a plausible deniability yeah. at, at least. Yeah, you yeah, know what yeah. I mean? No, I think it's like when you walk down the street in a, in a black, uh, the the vinyl jacket that's got the dragon on it mm-hmm. and the name of the dojo. Yeah. You'll never have to fight. If no. you wear that jacket. Oh, my I want to do one better. I I always thought I said uh we gotta get a little cauliflower ear just to no, add it on. Oh, that's good. It could have a Bluetooth in it yeah. too, so you could hear your favorite podcast. But you just yeah. before you go into the biker bar, you just <laughs> pop that on and you're immediately left alone, right? Right. right. <laughs> Because, you know, once in a while you'd see the guy in the tap out T-shirt and you'd go, yeah. I don't think I should fuck with that guy. But then yeah. you'd start thinking, they've sold millions of units. Right, There's right. no way that guy's a black belt. You know right. what I mean? Or whatever it is. But the cauliflower ear. 
Yeah. Can't fucking argue with that. Yeah, and also in high school, I never fucked with the guy with the uh, wrestling shoes and the Joey oh, Butterfuco yeah. pants. Yes. Yeah. yeah, don't fuck with He's those a kicker. guys. Yeah, he has a kicker. kicker. <clears throat> yeah, I've said uh, if I was Asian, I'd have some pan flute always in my phone, you know. <laughs> Someone starts fucking with you, and they hear that pan flute, and they just start getting spooked and walking. They'd walk away. Trouble's a little a rattlesnake noise. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just you should have a compilation for riding on the subway as an Asian, right. and it should have the flute with the rattlesnake thing, yeah. and then everyone would just fucking give you your yeah. space. Yeah, that would be effective. And fart spray, fart spray as well. Krav, wait, what were we talking about? Oh, so what was the deal? He wrote a book, but how did the lyrics? Well, wait. he had access to all their stuff, and some of it were like the. It, lyrics in development, like the oh, note, and he took all, and that he took stuff. them, and and, yeah, uh-huh. and then and then they just thought they were gone, and they're seeing them pop up and oh. auction out stuff, and they're trying to get it back, and they're going to court saying that these mm-hmm. guys, these I'd like guys. to see the rough drafts. See stuff crossed out. Yeah. Originally it was Motel Burbank, <laughs> right? Involved, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, punched up. Yeah, Roach Motel. <laughs> yeah, like uh, all the uh, yeah, like uh, I but but okay. That song falls under the heading of I never need to hear this song ever again just because I've heard it too much. There are songs that are horrible songs that I wish I'd never heard in the first place. This is not a bad song. It's a fucked out song. It's a song mm. I've heard so many times that I don't need to hear it again. The Gypsy Kings do a cover of it that'll bring oh, new yeah. life to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with the sort of Latin flavor the to fast it. fast acoustic yeah. guitar. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and other, other songs, Life in the Fast Lane. New Don't need their uh, mm-hmm. new kid in town as well. They're saying that the like collectively these manuscripts are worth a million dollars. Mm. With all the songs, right? What's the song that you've heard a million times, but you'll still listen to it again? I'll still listen to Freebird every time it comes on, and that's an sure. eleven-minute song. I'll has, listen to has f- different sections too. Farashaka. <laughs> you didn't say it had to be limited <laughs> right. to English. Do you speak French? No, I like I like the Fera Jaca, Fera Jaca, Dorme Vu, Dorme Vu, Fala La Latina, Fala La Latina, Ding Dang Ding. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah. You want me to keep going? I love it. I <laughs> kind of. <laughs> no, you know what I said to my son yesterday is uh, we were listening to like 80s channel, eating dinner, and uh, that I made for him. That's why there were dishes in the sink, Miss Juan. Mm -hmm. And I said, uh, the song by Toto um, came on, Hold the Line. Yeah. And I said, uh, do you have friends that fuck up the lyrics of songs like I had? Because I used to, I remember walking, you know, I'd be walking with my friend Steve Hughes when I was like 11 or 13 or something. And that song, the BTO song came on Taking Care of Business, and he was like, taking care of pistons every day. <laughs> and, he, and it's a, it's the greatest moment of your life. Like yeah. when I met when I met Jimmy, we were singing the Jose Feliciano theme song to uh, Freddie and the Man. Or no, let's see. Uh, Chico and the Man? Chico and the Man. Chico and the Man. We're, we're listening to Chico, and we were singing it, and it's like, uh, Chico, don't worry, the man, he ain't so hard to understand. And then there's a part where he goes, I know things will get better. And Jimmy goes, Gato, things will get. And I'm like, Gato? Gato? Yeah, that's why I said, that's what it says. No, he does not say Gato. <laughs> Gato? Wait a minute, that show came off the air in 74. You've been saying that shit for a decade? You've been saying Gato? Hey! Come here. <laughs> Listen to what Jimmy thinks. Like, uh, you would stop and destroy yeah. the person. And so Toto, hold the line. Love, Love isn't, isn't always on, on time. time. My friend Mark Drotman from my Acme comedy troupe was like, when the song came on, he goes, those are lies. And I was like, lies? What? No, it's hold, the song's called Hold. Hey! Everyone get in here and listen to what he thinks, and then you would make fun of him, and yeah. then all you could do is reel and shake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There, I, 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 it's a very simple mistake. There's nothing to it. It doesn't make you a bad person, but you have to fucking eat shit. Yeah. While that person who knows the lyrics and is sort of de facto smarter than you now because he paid attention <laughs> is going to just fucking rub it in your face. And so I said to my son, I go, 
are you kids still f- like fucking up lyrics? And he's like, no, it's always written. Right. It's all, it's all right. written. Yeah. And I'm like, so you don't have friends that screw up song lyrics? He's like, no. Nah. I go, man, you're really de- you're, you've missed a really important part of life. I thought That's it a was a big deal. I thought it was hold the line. Love is a cold waste of time. That's oh, what really? I used to sing for years. Yeah. But when you're in eighth grade or ninth grade, knowing like I remember thinking that John Densmore was the guitar player for the Doors, mm-hmm. and everybody's like, he's the fucking drummer. Right. And so hey, hey, Greg, Greg thinks John Densmore <laughs> is the guitar, and then it becomes it for here. weeks. They prank call you. Yeah. Hey, look, it's John Densmore. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah, there was so much satisfaction in somebody being wrong. Yes. It was all Especially we had. Especially about rock music, though. There was something about it. Oh, our entertainment was just people being wrong. Yeah. That was a big deal. Right. And now everything is it's settled immediately with the smartphone. Yeah. And also the lyrics are there. They're just, and also, kids aren't vicious. Yeah. Like, they're friendly. You I think know, my, girls my, still are. I, Boys are less vicious. Most, yeah, girls are worse in, at that age, like high school and stuff, but they're still generally nice to one another, mm. which is a, quite a departure from, you know, how I grew up. Yeah. Like being sort of physically abused by my male friends. Yeah, you know? yeah. I remember playing uh, street hockey with my friends one time, and we used to get into fights, but they were just like, we'd fuck around. We'd drop sticks and we'd grab each other. And at one point they threw me down and they got a little carried away and I was pinned down by five guys and they took turns wailing on the side of my thigh. Oh, yeah. You know how fucking painful yeah. that is? Yeah. And it's I deadlines. cried. I was in eighth grade and I literally cried. Mm. And... That was it. It's all I heard for a year. Cry, baby. I was like, cry, baby. I literally, I you were now. torturing me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A horrible. Yeah. I mean, with me, it's just unspeakable acts. No. Unspe- Speak. Speak. <laughs> well, I had, my buddy did th- he, when I was laying in my bed, he did throw a pocket knife at me and it did stick in my knee like it stuck. <laughs> oh, like it didn't Jesus hit and it would fall over. It, it stuck. Um, having the f- uh, flaming marshmallow, a fully engulfed marshmallow, like like when a marshmallow gets fully engulfed in flames, you yeah. can hear it burning. Yeah. It's so violent. Right. Having that stuck to the side of my face while it was still lit. Whoa. A, that was a that was a tough one. That that doesn't heal fast. No, and plus it looks like you have a venereal disease. Yes. You know? um, being dragged down my driveway naked right after school ended. We lived by the school, you know, and everyone was piling out of school, and uh-huh. I was nude. And yeah, that, that that's was a, a tough one. That was a tough one. Uh, being stripped, or at least attempt strip naked at school again. That was that was a tough one. Um, a lot of urine, you know. Oh, I had shit slapped in my head in the ear uh, during school hours. A, a big handful of uh, poop, you know. Yeah, on my the side buddy. Of my, head. my buddy took a piss on me while I was laying on a couch up and down me. He's now the town judge. Oh, <laughs> yeah. really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you know, people grow up. And but, another uh, kid had a lighter, and he lit it for a very long time, and then he shoved it into my face. I have a scar to this day. Oh, yeah. Guess what that guy is right now. He is the minister. He's the fire chief. Wow. He's the, he's the chief fire guy. We had, a, also we had a um, pump uh, BB gun, pellet gun. Oh, shit. And uh, the pump pellet gun would have, one of them we'd put, I had a friend who was, a, a, the only friend who had money, uh, Tom, the only black friend I had was the only rich friend I had. And, and we used to put... Uh, he had a koi pond, and he oh. put koi food in it and fire it. Huh. And uh, I was sitting on the toilet of his house, and he kicked the door open and just put the gun against my chest and fired. <laughs> well, I still have a scar from this fucking fish food that was, you know, 2,000 PSI. Really? Hit me in the chest. Um, <laughs> I mean, oh, one of the best. My neighbor, Eddie, was riding me on the handlebars of his bike 
and ghost rid me. Yeah. <laughs> he turned around and just, just gone. <laughs> bailed on a bike that I was just on the bars of. Yeah. <laughs> on a full paddle. Yeah, wow. That was funny. I we that used was good. to we had this hill behind my house and we used to sleigh ride down it and you'd take turns. Mm-hmm. You'd start at the top, everybody would stand halfway down the hill, and when you got to them, they would body slam and punch you. <laughs> and you tried to get through, but you didn't get through. Oh yeah. 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 That's all we did. That's yeah. all that's all we uh that's all we had. Yeah. But I, I I don't know. I mean, I think the shit in the ear was probably, the, you know, it may have been the low Wait, point. Shit in the ear? Shit in the ear. Wow. Yeah. I mean, well, to be fair, it was just a big open palm shit slam on the side of my head. Did it sound like shit? <laughs> it smelled like it. It sounded <laughs> like yeah. it. I I I could tell I could tell moments before it happened that something was wrong. You know. And uh, sure enough, it was. And the fact that it was during school hours. Yeah. Like, it was like 11, 10 in the halls of North Hollywood High. So that was problematic. Halloween one year, um, a kid sprayed. You used to, we used to take uh, aerosol tops and put them on shaving cream. And we'd spray each other with shaving cream. Oh, right. And one kid took Nair, the hair mm. remover. <laughs> wow, that's what happened. And he slapped it on the back of my head. And uh-huh. I ran home, and I washed it off, and I had a bald spot on the back of my head, and the flesh was slightly burned. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my son is nice to his friends, yeah. and they're nice to him. It's Boring. weird. <laughs> yeah. Boring and weird. Yeah. No grit. <laughs> no. No, not, not at all. Yeah, we were physically, maybe sexually... Abusive. I mean, everybody. You know, my friends all pissed on my mattress. They took a they took a sack of gold metal f- flour and threw it at a fan in my yeah. room that was on high. And <laughs> blew. That's fantastic. Fucking, fucking shit everywhere. I was never able to clean it. I mean, it was settled on every wow. surface in this entire room, and I started getting weevils. The shit, the weird little mites that are Ooh. in flour. Yeah. I had them in my room. Yeah. Because they blew up a sack of flour. <laughs> oh, I went to Mexico, and at some point, we're on like the beach, and somebody went, my buddy went like, I had this hat, I bought, bought a sombrero, it was like $11, and I was wearing it everywhere, and I was so proud of myself, and then at some point, someone of my friends was like, what's your hat doing over there on the beach? And I was like, I don't know, I don't know how I got there. I started walking, it blew up. <laughs> An M80, my fucking hat. And that's all we did. I was uh, I was in about eighth grade, and we used to hang out at my friend Brian Van Horn's house. Single mom who worked at the hospital, oh, worked ow. her fucking ass off to raise uh, three kids. And he lived in an apartment, and the mailboxes, it was just a table, and each, and each apartment in the building had one drawer mm-hmm. that you could just pull out, no lock on it. You could just mm-hmm. pull out a long drawer. So we were on the way out one day, and we were high and drunk. And I, uh, eighth grade, dropped my pants, and I took a shit in the mailbox. Perfect. And then the smell was so bad, I threw up. And so I threw up in the mailbox. <laughs> I mean, this poor woman. She Brian uh, didn't get the mail. The mom got the mail. Yeah. <laughs> Sweetest lady in the world. Yeah. Yeah. I remember my buddy Ray lived in one of those big apartment complexes, and all he wanted to do was fuck with me at any any time. And you went down the alley to get to the front, and then there was an alcove where the dumpster was. And it was at night. And his mom, Irene, said, uh, Ray, take out the garbage. And Adam, I got one for you, too. And uh, Ray left the apartment. And then for some reason, I lagged. I was talking to his mom or something, like holding the garbage thing. And eventually I left, and then as I was walking down the alley, I heard this woman yell, oh, shit, (laughs) because Ray (laughs) threw the garbage away and then hid right on the edge. She was, you know, 6'2", 225, and this miniature old woman, somehow the timing was just so that she was emptying her garbage and slid in front of me. (laughs) Ray, of course, thought it was me and couldn't give up an opportunity to fly out of the shadows <laughs> with his hands in the air screaming at the top of his lungs. That's the whole point. Like, yeah. there was no 
there was nothing you did that didn't involve fucking with your friend. Yes. And this poor woman just threw the garbage in the air. She was somebody's mom. She was like five foot nothing, yeah. 100 pounds. And I heard her scream, oh, oh shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's... She had no context for it. Yeah, I, for you. Yeah. I was at the, there was a lake near my house, and uh, we used to skate there. And this is back when lakes froze during the winter. They don't freeze anymore. Mm-hmm. And so we were at the, we used to go from, from Christmas till March. We skated every day. We played hockey all day. Mm. And then at night, they had these like telephone poles mm-hmm. with, with floodlights, and mm-hmm. they had a heated shack. Mm. That you could change your skates, and they sold hot mm. dogs. Mm. And so at night we would come, and they played AM music. Mm. You know, Linda Ronstadt. Mm. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And we'd go out there, and we'd we'd hide a, a case of beer in the in the snow on the banks of the lake, mm-hmm. and then we'd drink and we'd flirt with girls. So mm-hmm. I'm flirting with this girl, Celine, and uh, my friend, who is a good friend, Chris Spencer. Saw me standing there talking to her, so he skated as fast as he could, and he drove the top of his head into my jaw, and I hit the ice, and I was knocked unconscious. Wow. And then I got up, and she was talking to him. (laughs) (laughs) I got got two-timed. I was sitting in class one day. And I, I was in doing, you know, whatever the work was. And I, I was sketching a friend of mine. I was just like drawing his face from memory. And then, and then I wrote this whole long soliloquy about what I wanted to do to my prom date. And it was like, (laughs) (laughs) now I wasn't going to do any of it because she wasn't going to let me. But I was like, I want to drink the sweet nectar from her vagina and stuff. You know, it's fucking horrible, (laughs) scatological mess. You know, I was just writing about all these horrible, filthy things. I I was writing and the thing. Hope that Eagles guy gets a hand, gets his hands on that. It's going for auction. (laughs) So then, then at a later time, a couple days later, my buddy Carl, whose whose face I I drew his face on this. It's somewhere in this computer. We have this note somewhere in this computer. I I handed him the note. I said, I drew you, I drew a picture of you, so I, I guess it's yours. But it had all this filthy shit yeah. underneath it. For uh, Jenny was her name. And um, then a little later on, after that, a few days later on, he was living in a little garage apartment behind our friend's house, and he was an artist, and he had his art up on the walls and stuff. And I took one of those oversized lemons from one of those California lemon trees, and I shoved a firecracker in it, and I walked into the back, and I lit it, and I lobbed it into his apartment, one room. <laughs> and it blew up and blew lemon pulp all over his fucking paintings, every painting. No painting didn't get fragged, right? So, and it's got acid in it. It fucked up every painting he did. Yeah. And then he went and found Jenny and and took this letter and and read it. Wow. Read it. Read it to her. Damn. <laughs> Wow! <laughs> and I can't. I don't. I can't read Gossip, it from here. Can you read that? Yeah, I'm gonna get it here on my computer. Okay. All right. It's an actual. You did that drawing. Yeah, that's that, not bad. That's what Carl looked like. Yeah. <laughs> I don't a, know why. Jarhead. I was anything other than do homework or or classwork. Yeah. I was just sitting in you know Miss Valdivia's Spanish class or something. And you signed it just in case she didn't know it was you. <laughs> and then he went and gave it to her. I mean, I did blow up the lemon in this, but that, that was a bro code violation there, was it yeah, not? Yeah, I think so. God knows what this fucking thing says. I couldn't spell or read at the time, so it's going to be pretty phonetic. Wow. I, I think, but uh, Dawson, <laughs> Dawson can read it. Let's see. I'm Stay still down. waiting for it. Oh, uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll uh, we'll get. I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. We got the news. We got the letter from. <laughs> is there a date on there? 1982. Had to have been 82. 82. Yeah, May 6th, 1982. Wow. 
May 6, 1982. So this is... Day after you know, Cinco de Mayo. This is three weeks before the prom. Yeah. And I'm just sitting there daydreaming in Miss Valdivia's class. And my buddy Carl graduated a year earlier. So I'm like, oh, he's an artist. I'll draw a picture of him, and then I'll tell him what I want to do to Jenny. <laughs> Jenny. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> oh, by the way, I got like a half a peck on the cheek or something. After I that, it. yeah. Uh, You're lucky you can get a fucking restraining order after that. Oh, no, no. This He gave it to her post-prom, oh, I think. Okay. I think she wouldn't yeah. have gone. No. Had she read what was on this. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back with the contents of the letter right after this. In honor of Jim Carolla's 92nd birthday, here's a list of all the things Adam Carolla will do before he dies. Pop the locks on a briefcase full of money and slide it across a table. Just one of the things Adam will do before he dies. Let's get back to the Adam Carolla show. All right, Fitz Dog is here. I, I'm worried about what this letter says. Wow, <laughs> it's got to be so bad. Excited. This is not going to stand the test. All of right, time. so I'm I'm a senior at North Hollywood High. The prom's coming in the next week or so. Because yeah, graduation back then would be like June 12th or something. The prom was probably June 1st or something. <laughs> so here we are in May, and I'm writing to my buddy Carl. Carl. I was just sitting in Spanish and decided that your face was more important than classwork. Not a bad likeness, eh, Carl? This little sketch might be worth something one day. <laughs> anyway, it is Thursday, and I'm happy I'm going to go to the beach tomorrow and the prom the next day. Oh, they promised two days away. Yeah. Okay. Tough schedule, huh? By the way... I would like to drink the sweet nectar from Jay Hoover's love box. <laughs> he showed her this whole fucking letter. Nectar. <laughs> nectar. Does it, yeah, go on. Speaking. Uh, uh. Speaking of love boxes. I have not smacked it for a day. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accomplishment. <laughs> that's where that's where the writing gets a little yeah. bit cramped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you might have to help me with this. And J John Gillingham. Oh yeah, John. Okay. Yeah. And John Gillingham made me promise not to. He says I'll need it for the prom. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh. But I think it's just going to want to make me go home early to smack it. <laughs> and this part is torn off, but I can, I can also say that it says, P.S. Don't show this to Jenny. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, but he went wow. and did it. Yeah. He did it anyway. Damn. All because I blew up some citrus in his apartment. Real Romeo. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Jeez. <sighs> to smack it. Underline. Like five M's. Underline. <laughs> <laughs> the nectar. I really love Bob. What is What does oh, nectar even I mean? <laughs> oh. That was in Spanish, man. That was inspired. <laughs> That's so funny because you think about, you know, Shakespeare when he was 16, what he was right. Sonnets. Yeah. You not smack it. Not smack it. <laughs> <laughs> I had a self deprecating sense of humor. I explained that I'd want to leave the prom early to go home and beat off. Oh. Yeah. Well, thanks, Carl. Was she a girlfriend? Or she was just a prom date. It was like a freestanding she was date. A, she was a she was a prom, she was just a prom date. She, she yeah. bare, it was a total mercy of a mission of mercy for her just to go with me. Yeah. To the prom. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was a mercy mission. She didn't have she she was out of my league. That picture taken at uh, her house. No, that was my dad. My dad took my dad owned a, a normal house by huh. the time I got to high school. He lived in A frame shacks and everyone lived in a shotgun shack, but my dad remarried <clears throat> he remarried a normal person who had a normal job 
and like a credit card and could came from a little something like you know a normal family i'm i'm totally convinced my stepmom was the one who was filling out the bank forms and she worked for UCLA for like administration for you know 10 years plus plus the house was 90 grand in the San Fernando Valley in you know 19 you know 8 uh you know 1979 or something something like that but that was a that was my dad's sort of normal house i mean <clears throat> You know, fifteen hundred square feet, but it had a driveway and a sink that had a right side and a left side, which blew me away. I was like, "There's two sinks in this sink," because <laughs> our sinks were tubs. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I was like, "There's two. We got a split in our sink, people. We're two sink family here. We got two bathrooms. We got two sinks. So the Corollas are moving up fast." That's the way I looked at it. Yeah. By the way, the look. Suit looks great. Mm-hmm. Rented, rented. Tux. Corsage is lovely, but you have a grin on your face that says, "I'm gonna make my friends smell my finger after the prom." <laughs> yeah, like you're gonna tell them everything that happened. Yeah, no such <coughs> luck. No. Mm, mm. Anyway, yeah. My friend Frank came to school one day, and I was uh, the night before. He told me that. He dry humped his girl Elena and came in his uh, sweatpants. So the next day I'm at my locker and I'm undoing the dial and I feel something over my face. No. <laughs> and it was the crotch of his sweatpants. <laughs> wow, yeah. 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 Oh, oh, yeah. 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 You have to. Yeah. Yeah, that's this is how we rolled. That's all there was. I mean, that's that's all we that, that was our entertainment. Yeah. Humiliation. Yeah. That's that's how it worked. And now my son, like, he'll go, what are you doing? Tonight? I'm going over to Tim's house. What are you doing? We're doing a brisket. That's it? <laughs> no fist fighting? No. No headlocks? No, he does a, he does a hell of a brisket. He smokes it. You're just going to sit it? down and eat brisket? Who's going to ruin the brisket? Like, I was a ceramics major in high school, right? Really? <clears throat> yeah. Because at some point, they just went around and went, what's your major? And I went, well, let's see, I'm failing, failed biology, failed driver's ed, uh, failing Miss Valdivia Spanish class. Ooh, I'm not failing ceramics. And they're like, all right, <laughs> ceramics it is. Yeah. Your ceramics major, because I just picked the class I wasn't failing. All right. <clears throat> you had to buy your own clay. You know, at the beginning of class, you'd have to pen like $12 and buy like a block. Like it was a cinder block size thing of clay, and that was your clay. My fucking clay was thrown out the window every other day. Yeah. It was a second story. <laughs> There's a second story, and there was a drainage, you know, grate down below it or whatever. That's where I would find my block of clay. Yeah. And if it wasn't in there, it'd been spiked with pencils, <laughs> like a like a tree hugger would do, like a logging camp, you know? Like, they'd, they'd take number two pencils and push it all the way through my clay, and yeah. then they'd seal it up, you know? And then, at some point... John Tyler made a Mr. Heat Miser out of clay and it got destroyed somehow, blew up in the kiln or something that he took it out on everyone else's project. Uh-huh. So he started mashing his fist and because wow. he thought it was sabotage. And then everyone who got their project destroyed by John Tyler thought it was somebody else and went and mashed someone else. It was total chaos. Wow. I didn't get out of there with a fucking project. And if I did, if I did finally get something glazed and through the kiln and grated. When I was walking at home, my buddy Ray would go, well, let me see that. And I'd go, I was, oh, we made a pinch pot. I'm going to give it to my grandma. Yeah, let me see that. And he'd, and he'd start throwing it in the air. And he'd throw it in the air, and he'd go, whoa, whoa. And I'd go, just don't. Come on, just don't. And he'd go, what? Don't bang. You, you want to go, oh. you throw it, and you throw it higher and higher. And you're, you can't. Try to intercept because it's going to hit the ground. Yeah. He just can't. All you can do is beg him to stop. Oh, it hit the ground. Yeah. <laughs> it hit the Damn ground. Yeah. So didn't make it home. Wow. That was it. Jesus. It's how we rolled. Wow. Total abuse all the time. Sounds like you're the only one getting abused. Did you abuse? Did you torment? Uh, well, I got I, I got into... Yeah, I, I got into a situation where we're running around my house trying to tackle each other, destroy each other, or something. Um, P- 
piss on each other, and then my my buddy my buddy Todd, who who couldn't piss on people for he wasn't any good at it, but he pissed into a mug. And so he'd throw it at you. You know what I mean? Like, he, there's no dignity in that, by the way. If you can't yeah. brew onto somebody, but anyway, yeah. uh, but anyway, Todd was running around like Ray was running around. Everyone's running around, and uh, Todd set his mug of piss down on like the on a washing machine or something. And we had one of these grates where the window was. the The window got blown out because God knows what we were doing, and there was a screen with the little holes in it, like a security screen or something. But when you're outside, it was too light. And in the laundry room, it was dark. Right. If you wanted to see in, you had to cup your hands, put your nose <laughs> against the screen. And Ray was running around looking for everybody, and everyone was hiding and fucking with everyone. And at some point, I'm standing in the thing, and I see Todd. He's got a, m- a fresh mug of piss, right? And I go, all right. Todd, Todd left his piss behind. He abandoned his piss, you know? A green beret would never leave. Never leave your piss no. behind. Never leave your piss behind. And I'm like standing there looking at his piss, and I see Ray coming around the corner. He's like trying to look through the window, you know, but he can't see through the grate. So he cups his hands, and he and he puts his nose against the grate to see in there. And I'm standing a foot away from the door, yeah. and I just take this hot thing of piss, and I I played football and baseball. I was just like. Pap, smack, 100 miles an hour, Whoa. right in his fucking face. Whoa. And he was like, my, you know, eyes burning, you know, the whole, <laughs> I've heard it all. That's, <laughs> you know, I, this, 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 some of that, you know, I was, I was generally on the receiving end of a lot of it, but, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd done my share. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. I never did the uh, friend passes out, draw a dick on his forehead. Uh, that would be way too mild for mm. us. It was hot foot and duct yeah, tape and yeah. cigarette butts and <laughs> yeah. stuff. It was everything. Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah, hot foots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The well, then what happened was well, there was a later on one of the guys moved into community and he he uh, became a teacher at a school and in a administration of a small smallish high school in like a more rural <coughs> community out of state. And then um, we were doing Love Line one day and um, on MTV. And then um, Drew said, what about your buddy that used to screw a beanbag chair back in high school? The beanbag. <laughs> you can picture that, yeah, right? Well, I'm trying to picture how you... You got to unzip support. it a little. Oh, okay, got yeah, it, got and it. Yeah. You make an opening. Okay. You know, and I said, oh, yeah, Drew, come on now, or whatever. And he <laughs> he insisted on saying his whole name, first and last. <laughs> <laughs> and MTV was a wildly popular show. Uh, Love Line was wildly popular on MTV. All the high school kids watch. And then when he came back to school the next day, all the... Students were wow. saying something to him yeah. in this smallish school in this community, you know, with a bunch of sixteen-year-olds. Yeah, oh, that was tough. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, he called me, and even though we were we were friends, he he actually had Todd, the guys had the cup of piss. He called me. And he said, "This this guy's he's going to sue you." Like, wow. like he's so fucking livid. Yeah. He's, he's livid. He's livid because he just got back from school. <laughs> and every fucking jack off at school slapping him on the back, calling him beanbag man and stuff. You know. So, uh. um, so I, I I I got on the phone with him and I just said, you know, it's never going to happen again. And 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 uh they, you know drew and that was fucking drew drew does that every once in a while come on come on tell me the name what's the story you know and, and uh i i just I, he said you know and he just said you can never bring up my name again on the mtv or whatever i'll i'll, I'll kill you i'll sue you or i'll kill you or <laughs> yeah. whatever it's like never again i was like yeah never again and then <clears throat> and then about three days later they re-ran that same episode <laughs> <laughs> But he didn't know it. He didn't yeah. watch it. He just showed up at school and got more slaps on the back. Right. And uh, then he went insane. Wow. Then he then he went insane. 
at that point. He thought I just went. He he thought I just doubled did it. down. He yeah. thought I doubled down like yeah. two days later. Right. Yeah, that was tough. Yeah. I had a I had a buddy that we were um, we were playing darts, and uh, I told him not to throw the. It was in my room, and I said, "Hit the fucking board. Don't hit the wall, because mm-hmm. my mom's gonna be pissed if there's any more holes in the wall." So he takes three darts. And he purposely throws them in the wall. Yes. And I ran over to the wall and I grabbed a dart and he started running <laughs> and I whipped it at him and I hit him in the Achilles tendon and I, I dropped him like a gazelle. Wow. He went straight down. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow, that's good. But he earned that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and we had the little stuff. The little stuff would always be, you know, the little stuff was like if we went to a diner, we all ate like pigs, and there's the one friend who never finished his fries, you uh-huh. know. And, and a, at some point, he just push it out, and my buddy Ray just fire a snot rocket right into it, <laughs> so he'd claim it for his own, you know, because he knew. <laughs> <laughs> just stupid. That, oh, yeah. But that was that was kind of standard. Yeah, that yeah. was standard fare. Right. Stuff. All right, we got what do we got? Some more news? news story. Sure. So there's an elementary school in North Carolina that went viral. Because uh, they took a ton of cereal boxes, like 2,800 cereal boxes. Oh, somebody tweeted me this. I'm glad you brought it up. Yeah. Because they tweeted me and they just went, how fast would your buddy Ray have fucked this up? And I was like, he would have never let this happen. (laughs) No, there's no way he wouldn't have kicked one of these cereal boxes in the middle of the line before this. (laughs) He would have ruined it. There's no way. We would have never abided by this. We, somebody, we you this could have could never have done. done this in front of us because we would have fucked it up. Yeah, there's so this, just no way. I mean, this video goes on for like three minutes. It, it, I know it's never it. ending. It's, well, it's, it's North Carolina, so there was definitely no Fruit Loops in there. <laughs> it, That's gay kibble. Yeah, so it's uh, viewed over 30 million views on TikTok. Damn! Wow. Did they reset the boxes once they went around? What do you mean? Like, is this a circle? No, this is and just they going through the back up. This, this, this is, is all one, this is all one line. line. They're weaving all the way through the through school the holes. until they get to the gymnasium. Yeah. yeah. They must have told all the students to just bring in five boxes of, you know, Kellogg's put them up to this. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everyone bring right. in eight boxes of f- cereal. It's got to be the big size, too. <laughs> yeah. No fun packs. 2,777 yeah. cereal boxes <clears throat> donated. I know that you get to the Corolla section, and it's those little tiny shitty boxes. Oh, it'd, it'd be a sack of granola. <laughs> and it'd a fuck bag. the whole thing up. My mom would go, we got to do granola. <laughs> Corolla sack oh, would have ruined the entire event. <laughs> So these cereal boxes were donated to the Clemens Food Pantry, Mm -hmm. and they said 2,700 boxes will take us through three months. So thank you. Wow. All right. Yeah. Three months of bad nutrition for homeless people. Three months of, yeah, of cereal. But, I mean... This is this is pretty extravagant here, and the kids are the kids are pumped as they. It's a big fucking school. All these kids. I know. It keeps going. All right. Yeah, we get it. You can see it. But anyway, so viral. Viral. The, the, yeah, Ray, Ray and Chris would have absolutely. absolutely I don't even think it. I would have stood by, stood for this. <laughs> we would have had. We would have had to fuck up. We had to fuck up everything all the time. So there, there's just no way this, you just glued, this could have worked. You just glued one to the floor. <clears throat> so it just stops. Honestly, that would be too ambitious. We They would have been setting up the very last ones at the <laughs> and, and the quad, you know, yeah. outside. And we would have walked somewhere in the middle and kicked one and just <laughs> knocked them all knocked them all over. A hundred percent. There's yeah. no way we wouldn't have done it. Right. We just would have had to have done it. Yeah. yeah. We would have just left. Oh, we just figure every if teachers are all paying attention to the Siri. Let's go get high. Oh yeah, yeah, probably better angle. All right, let's do let's do one more. All right, so um, NASCAR, mm-hmm. they uh, they postponed the Daytona 500. What the weather? So, well, mm-hmm. it, so it so um, the the person who's supposed to wave the flag had to leave because uh, they postponed it, so it didn't fit his schedule anymore. Um, and that was DJ Khaled. Oh, so no. but they did ask him. Um, do you have any fur- plans for further involvement in the sport? And he says, "I'd like to, I'd like to get get a car going. A we the best NASCAR. He could certainly so, afford you it. You think he drives like he plays the guitar, or he just sits in the car and just moves the wheel, yeah. <laughs> 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 like makes all the sounds? Right. Yeah. 
I so, went to the Daytona 500 last year. You did? Yeah. Never been to a car race before. How'd you end up at the... You must have been in town doing I something. I was doing Burt Kreischer's tour, like sleeping on a bus, which was mm-hmm. one of my bucket list things, was to mm-hmm. tour and sleep on a bus. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so uh, it was like a week long, and then Burt goes, hey, you want to stay an extra day? We're going to go to the Daytona 500. And I was like, absolutely <laughs> not. And so... I told my wife, and she's like, your social media account fucking sucks. You got a chance to go to the Daytona 500 and be down there with the cars? Right. You're going to Daytona. So I said, Bert, I'd like, love to go to Daytona. Don't get your nose hair all out of whack, woman. <laughs> <laughs> so I went, and, uh, and we got there, and it was just so fucking boring. And we were down, even now I'm standing there next to the cars and I'm like, mm. who cares? <laughs> and then I had to take a piss. So I went and went to take a piss and I walked back to the cars and they're all gone. It's like Bert and the posse is gone. Mm-hmm. I don't have a ticket. <laughs> mm. I don't know where we're sitting. I don't mm. know where we're hanging out. The tour bus is among 10 to 20,000 buses and mm-hmm. campers that are circling. Mm-hmm. We got bought in a golf cart from the bus to the right. thing. I spent <laughs> two hours walking around, and then I finally, because you we walked under the track. Yeah. I have to and then the I tunnel. finally realized, oh, they're in a luxury box. They got to mm-hmm. be in a luxury box. Mm-hmm. And so I, f- and cell phone service did not work because there was so oh, many yeah, people trying to yeah, use their yeah. phones. Mm-hmm. No cell phone service. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I finally find like a help desk, and I was like, you got to help me find Bert Kreischer. Oh, we can't give out that information. I go, I go, I'm literally going to have to hitchhike to the <laughs> airport and, and fly home. And so I called around, and I finally found the box, and I came, and they just looked at me like, what the fuck is wrong with you? But did you enjoy any of the race once no, it started? No, it was awful. Oh, uh, and then all you got is free beer and shit food after that, I mean, yeah. in the box. Yeah. There was a lot of celebrities in the box, and they, none of them cared about it either. They were just showing their faces for the cameras. Well, I never was really a NASCAR guy. I went to the Indy 500 a time or two. Uh, that's just an event. It's yeah. just a spectacle. It's right. extravaganza. Uh, but I, I, I like the road courses, the, you know, the F1. Yeah, stuff. And, and I like NASCAR F1. does get down on the road yeah. courses every once in it a while. It got fun at the end because that's when people started going hard and there were crashes like every three minutes and they'd have to yeah. shut down the course, yes. start it up, somebody else would ramp somebody. They'd... That was fun. Right. So DJ Khaled. So DJ Khaled might be oh. getting a, a NASCAR. I don't, you know, I, I, I will rank him up with the Kardashians. Like if you would have got hold of me ten years ago, or what, at whatever point in time, and go, what about the future of the Kardashians? I would have been like, what about them? I don't know, bootleg porn. I don't know, nothing. Nobody. Who cares? Nobody's ever gonna. And DJ Cal, if you got hold of me like 10 years ago, I was like, this ass clown. He doesn't yeah. do anything. He doesn't yeah. play an instrument. Nobody fucking cares. The horrible this fat rapper. Ass the horrible rapper. Doesn't, who cares what this fat ass has to say? Couldn't be more wrong. Yeah. 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 He's impressive. He's impressive. So, yeah. So, um, yeah, maybe maybe uh, next time we'll see it, we the best car with the, he, the he, Cal team. He and, uh, they and the Kardashians, though, he is the American dream in that. I don't know what his nationality is, but we, we don't necessarily embrace his kind in this in this country. He's fat. We're usually against fat people. He's talentless, and he's a cajillionaire who does whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Uh, he is the American dream. I mean, you have to point. Everyone should just point their children to, if that fucking guy, if this talentless fat ass, I don't know what, can make it in this country, you have no fucking excuses, son. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and now it's just pure. And I say that with love. We should be inspired by it. It's him. just pure. I'm gonna make it. Everybody, get in on my grind. He's Palestinian. Is he? Yeah, like like they're I, I, on the pecking order. They're below Mexicans in this country. Well, and the the Jew run entertainment business is not helping him. Not mm-hmm. helping, and yet that's th- gonna be the clip. And yet he thrives. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> Let <laughs> clip me. headline. Let me give a uh, plug to uh, Fitz Dog over here. I'm going to be uh, at Kimmel's Club coming up. You just go to amcurl.com for I, I got live shows, Vegas and West Palm Beach and everywhere. Fitz Dog got shows at the Comedy Store in La Jolla, 
March 8th through the 10th. And then uh, Hollywood Improv, that's coming up March 16th, April 4th through the 6th. Side Splitters, Tampa, Florida. Fitzdog. Uh, we go to gregfitzsimmons.com. Fitzdog.com. Fitzdog.com for the, all the live shows, podcasts, Fitz dog radio and sunday papers as well well fitz uh or i should say number one guest most free i can't believe that i'm i'm honored beyond belief and uh and again i'm i really am proud of you man thank thanks for giving the world uh that many episodes consistently thanks thanks for being a part of that many episodes so until next time i'm crow for chris maxipata and greg fitzsimmons saying mahalo (laughs) 